Well, hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and it's time for another Ellen Hudson release and blog hop. So let's get rolling looking at all the new goodies. I once again made cards with all the new stamp sets, and this one has all these little outfits that you can put onto all the leading ladies. So if you're a collector of the leading ladies, I did mine and then cut each one of them into little squares, watercolored just the background, and it made for a really fun card with a bunch of people on it, but you can combine these with a whole bunch of the other stamp sets, even stamp sets that are not Ellen Hudson ones. Shh, don't anybody tell her I said that. And there's also a Boo and Treat die for sentiments. There's some Halloween stamps with this cute little dinosaur wearing his little outfit and he's all ready for Halloween. And I used the Booyah from the Booyah sentiment set. And then I painted the whole dynamite stamp set background and made a fence and trees and stuff with some watercolors. And I did all watercolor this month because last time I did all Copic. So I had people asking if I would do watercolor this time. So next up, I tried something really different. I painted in black and white and made it a really old fashioned Christmas with this cool jar and it has tons of different candies that you can put in it. So much fun for somebody with a sweet tooth like me. And next up, and of course everything has dyes to go with it. Next up is the little dynamite Christmas dinosaurs. And you can use these year round, even though they have stuff for Christmas like trees and ornaments but you can use them for other things too. And I combined them with that little wagon from last month's release that everybody loves so much so that my little dinosaur could drag around a wagon. And I spritzed everything after I got done watercoloring it. I just kind of threw some white paint across it and just kind of flicked it so that it would look like snow. I kind of put it on my brush, hit it on my finger and, and sort of tapped it so that it would flick all over the place. Uh, let's see. Next up, we have this fall card with this giant Mondo leaf. And this one is actually going to be on Instagram TV later on today, I believe. So you can watch that on my Instagram channel if you want to see that. No audio voiceover, but you'll get to watch the painting of it. And of course, there's a die to go with it. And then we get down to the space cards. This constellation background is really fun. It's a stitched background, and I put little dots of gold pen on them to make little stars and then inside I also used a strip of this it's really old shimmer paper I don't even remember who it's by I just had a sheet of it and decided to use it on that card this is the card that I will be making today and I used some nouveau shimmer powders to make the background I'll show you how I did that and how I painted the little rocket ship and the rocket ship I stamped on here in gray and then the the planets I have stamped in black, so I'm going to leave the planets showing, but I want to know where my rocket ship's going to be so I can do some things around it. This is watercolor paper. I've attached it with just a little bit of adhesive onto my craft assistant, which is a 12 by 12 piece of metal. So if you want to hold things down with magnets of any kind, you can do that on this thing, but it's really helpful to clean things off. And I'm going to be using shimmer powders and they're messy and they get everywhere and this stuff this thing just washes off nice and clean. So I started by painting water across everything except for those three planets and then I'm gonna get out the Nouveau powders. And I did a video recently with the Nouveau powders and the Catherine Pooler new color burst so I will link to that at the end of this you can go see that but these shimmer powders I really like they have some shimmer throughout all of them but I've noticed that I kind of throw mine into the drawer and then I end up with all this excess in the cap because these don't have a way to like not be capped off necessarily. I mean, they stay in the, the bottle, but as soon as I open them, my first shake is by tipping the cap out onto my project so I can use that color. So just warning for you if you throw things in a drawer in a messy way like I do. But I'm using three colors, Catherine Wheel, the, uh, oh, what is this? Atlantis is the blue one and the gold one is Lunar Rocket. And then I wanted to start working on the background which is going to be the stormy sky color and I realized I better better do my rocket ship fire first so I stopped put down some of the red and some of the gold and then went back to throwing in the rest of the the background color. 
because the idea that I had for this, and you can tell me at the end if you think it worked out, I think it did, is to have, you know, that really dark black sky background with a swirl, like a, like you're looking at a galaxy side on, almost, and so that you get this kind of oval shape of the little, little sp spray stuff, all the little colors and things, so that that looks like a galaxy, and then there's all this dark sky around it. So I'm using my brush to smooth out everything else. It's a little challenging to smooth this stuff out when it's powder, because the powder sometimes just likes to stay where it is. So just kind of being really intentional with moving it with my brush is what I'm kind of playing with here. And I'm not moving the brush too much into the interior areas, except once they're a little dry. But while they were wet, I just kind of let them do their own thing because I want them to feel very crystalline and to retain all that crystalline stuff. In contrast to, I want the smoother areas on the outside, all that dark sky behind it. And I'm going to be adding more to that when I get to the next stage of this. But I wanted a little bit more in the center here so that it would look like this is that oval shape and that it it's kind of a, a spinning galaxy. But notice how none of this really went onto the planets. That's because of all that water that I put down at the start. I went around the planets because these powders should not stick anywhere where there's not water at. I'm not using any spray so that I don't end up spraying anything onto the planets by accident. Once it was mostly dry, probably 80% dry, I started tapping in a little bit more of the three colors that I'm using for the galaxy portion, the Lunar Rocket, the Atlantis, and the Catherine Wheel, because now those are not going to move very much at all. They're going to stay crystalline and they're going to stay shiny, but they're still going to stick. Now all of this, of course, can re-wet after you're done, so don't get the card wet, but it's really a cool way to make a technique that creates this incredible galaxy background, this, this whole big space looking thing, but do it in a controlled way. Because a lot of times our galaxy backgrounds are just very random and this is much more intentional. So I have trimmed out my background and put it onto a card base with a layer of gold paper behind it. And then sprinkled out a little bit of the powders, the same four colors, so I could use them as paint and that way everything else I paint in this is going to match the same colors that are in the background, which would be kind of nice. And then you can add as much or as little paint to the planets in the background as you wish. And I am, I am so impressed that the rocket fire turned out the way it did, especially when I had put a bunch of that black down and thought, oh my gosh, I ruined it. And then it works anyway. It was kind of amazing. So. You never know what's going to happen with these because they they move on their own, they do their own thing, and you need to be a little bit careful, but you also need to let it do what it's going to do. So I put just a little bit of color in there so those feel like they're part of the scene now instead of just being glaring white. And I'm going to put a bunch of colors into my rocket ship. The one thing I'm focusing on is keeping a white edge around both sides. If you're using the dye that goes with it, because there are of course dyes that come that you can get to, that fit all of these shapes, then you'll have that white outline, but I wanted to fussy cut it so I didn't have the outline on the outside. Since I had this super realistic looking galaxy, I wanted the, the little rocket ship to maybe look a little bit better, you know, a little, little bit more, I guess, realistic, rather than having that big white outline around it. So, you know, there's, there's me trying to overthink this because we don't really have a rocket ship like this with an alien that is a realistic thing because we don't know what kind of rocket ships that they fly in, do we? So I just mixed a couple of different colors on the rocket ship, the, the gold, the teal, and the, the dark black-ish color, and put a little bit of the red on the inside so it looks like he's got some glowing lights going on. And after I got it all done, I fussy cut it out and then adhered it on with some dimensional adhesive. Does that not look so cool? I just love this card. I think this was way too much fun. And it'll be great to send to somebody. Look at you take off. 
Like just that encouragement when somebody does something amazing. I love giving people that kind of encouragement. So there are my cards. Don't forget to go see on Instagram later on today, the fall card. And there's still pictures of everything over on my blog. And of course it's a blog hop. So you want to see what everybody else has made with some of these amazing products. So check it all out. Link in the doobly do shopping links as well as blog stuff. And I will see you guys later on. Take care and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.